So the last section we're going to look at this week is 5.6 part 1. Well, 5.6. We'll do part 1 today. And remember, we don't have class tomorrow, so we won't do part 2 until Thursday. All right. So just to make sure, and also make sure we get it in the video. Um, Caleb, what does that symbol mean? Um, greater than. Greater than. Yeah. And Abby, this symbol means? Less than or equal to. Yep, less than or equal to. Um, Brady, how about this symbol? That's a less than. And that symbol right there. Uh, what is it? Yeah, greater than or equal to. So no specific spot on your guided notes for that, but just to make sure we remember how to how to pronounce those, that's important. Okay, so what is a linear inequality in two variables? Well, it's pretty much exactly what it what it says. In order to have an inequality you need to have one of these four symbols. So we're going to see one of those four symbols. And you're going to see something that has two letters in it. Okay, so on the guided notes on the first slide where it says, let's see, a linear inequality in two variables results from taking an equation such as, and I think you guys have right up until that, x minus 3y equals 6. So that's an equation with two variables. But if you replace what I just circled with one of those four symbols, then you turn it into a linear inequality. Which one of the four? Well, then it doesn't matter. Okay, replace it with any any one of the four. So here's here's an example taking that problem and turning it into a linear inequality x minus 3y is less than 6. That's a linear inequality in two variables. Two different letters, and you have an inequality symbol. Okay, what we're going to look at doing is taking something like that and graphing it. So that's kind of what we practiced in the last section, graphing a line. And then the extra step we're going to have to do is either shade above or below the line. So we're going to get some pictures that look something like this. I'm drawing a line, and then we end up shading, like above it or below it. Depends, depends on the problem. Um, has anybody done, done that kind of thing before? You draw a line and then you shade, shade on one side of it? OK. So we'll, we'll take a look. I'm going to make a chart to tell you how to do it. It's going to tell you when you need to shade above. It's going to tell you when you need to shade below. Also, sometimes this line needs to be a dotted line, or like that. Sometimes it needs to be a solid line. I'm going to tell you when it has to be which one. All right, so on the next blank line, at the end of it, it says, is an ordered pair. You want to write down a solution of an inequality in two variables is an x and a y that when you plug it into the equation you get a true statement. So a solution of an inequality in two variables that uses the letters x and y is an ordered pair that when you plug it into the inequality you get a true state.
It doesn't have to use the letters X and Y, but those are the most common letters that, that you're going to see. All set? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I'll take a look at it uh, probably tomorrow. Right. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> Let's look at an example of a pretty simple inequality. X plus Y <coughs> is greater than 3. Can somebody give me a coordinate that if I fill in the x value you tell me and the y value you tell me into these two letters and add them up, it would come out bigger than 3. Yeah. So 5 for the x, and what did you pick for the y? Five. Sure. If you try to, pl to plug in the point 5, comma 5 into this problem, it would work. x is 5, y is 5, and 5 plus 5 is definitely bigger than 3. Yeah. So that's not the only solution, but that, that is one. Uh, could somebody give me another one? That if you plug in x and y, it would come out true? Yeah. Okay, let's pick different numbers. Just to show, just to kind of know, we, we don't always have to use the same numbers. Yep? Uh, 5 and 2. All right, let's try 5 and 2. So we picked an x value of 5 and a y value of 3. If you plug in a 5 here and a 3 there, 5 plus 3 is 8. And then 8 is definitely bigger than 3. So the one that you said, Michael, that would have worked too. 3, 3, 3. Here's one that doesn't work. 0, comma 1. Does not work. In the point 0, 1, um, what's the 0? What, what letter? Yeah, that's my x. And cadence, the 1 is my y. x is 0, y is 1. What's 0 plus 1? Yeah, that gives me 1. Is 1 bigger than 3? No. So this is a point that doesn't work. So we could keep going. We could find a bunch of points that do work, and we could find a bunch of points that don't. Our goal is to figure out the ones that do work. And we don't write them all down, because you'd be writing points all day. You can write decimals. You can do all kinds of points. The way we're going to show all the ones that work is we're going to draw a picture. Okay, let's try this one. So this is example one. Let me see. On your guided notes. Um, you guys have a spot on the back for example one? Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll, we'll do example one. Do it in the upper left box on the back, and then we'll come back to filling out the front. But let's let's try something. Okay, let's so there's your inequality, and they want me to figure out if 10, 3 is a solution to that inequality. It's not asking if it's the only solution. It just wants to know if that's one thing. So let's start with the 10. Um, Abby, what's the 10 going to be in that formula? X and Sophie, what about the 3? That's going to be Y. So now fill in 10 for X and 3 for Y and see if it comes out true. So 10 minus 3 times 3 is less than or equal to 6. And I'm going to put a question mark above it because I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Dorian, what can I simplify on the left? You multiply the negative 3 times 3. And what's negative 3 times 3? Negative 9. Yeah, negative 9. And if I finish simplifying on the left side, um, 10 minus 9 is going to give me 1. one. Okay. 
Is that true? One is less than or equal to six. Melissa? Uh, no? So you think one is bigger than six? Yeah, that's true, right? One is definitely less than or equal to six. So tell whether the ordered pair is a solution. Uh, yes, it is. It is a solution. Natalie, is it the only solution? Um, no. no, we could come up with another one that would probably work besides 10 years. But that, that is one that does work. Okay. Any questions on um, why 10-3 is a solution? That's all you have to do. Just plug it in and see if you get something that's true. All right, so we're going to go, I think we're going to write something back on the front end. Steps for graphing a linear inequality. Yep, that's what we're going to do next. So the way that we're going to show our answer to one of these problems is a picture. Right? And you're going to do it as a picture on, on the test as well. The first step to doing one of these problems is drawing it just like you would draw a line y equals mx plus b. That's exactly what you have to do right away. The extra step is going to involve shading somewhere, either above or below. So once, and I'm gonna, we're going to write these down under the steps for graphing an inequality in a minute. So you don't, you don't have to write that down. So once we draw our line, we're going to do some shading. And then the way we're going to figure out where to shade, well, we're going to have a tape, and that's going to tell us where to shade. And anything in the shaded area is going to end up being a solution to the problem. That way we don't have to write down a bunch of solutions. We're just going to color them all in as a picture. Okay. So how do we do it? So under steps for graphing a linear inequality, the first step is it says make sure it's in the format y equals mx plus b. The only difference is you're not really going to have an equal sign. Instead of an equal sign, you're going to have either a greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. But the point is you, <coughs> excuse me, you want y by itself on the left, and you want mx plus b on the right. If the problem already is y equals mx plus b, great, we don't have to do anything. If it's not, we're going to have to fix it. So like this one, that one would be good. y is already by itself. That one's also good. y is already by itself. I don't know if I have one where y isn't by itself, but we'll, if we have one, then we'll, we'll fix it. Okay, step two. We need to plot some points on the graph. So this is where I just keep going until I hit the edge of my graph because it's so so big on the smart board. Remember how you graph a line. You use the M and the B. Can someone remind me? What's B? When you're writing the equation of a line? Yeah? B is your Y intercept. And what's your M? Yep, your slope, and we always need the slope written as what kind of number? Yeah, fraction. We always need it as a fraction. Perfect. So this is what basically we just said. B is the y-intercept. When you want to graph a line, that's the number you start at. So like if the y-intercept was a two, 
put a dot on the two. And then M, we're going to do that, that's your slope. Remember the slope is always the number that's next to X. Or you could say the number that's with the X. Now remember the two main cases you're going to have with slope. Is it going to be a positive number or a negative number? If your slope is a positive, your line is going to look <coughs> excuse me, like that. If it's a negative, it's going to look like that. So there's two directions we go. We're either up and to the right, or we end up going down and to the right. But we always go one of, one of those two ways when we draw our line. And on the right, try to summarize which way you move when. Okay, so slope is rise over run. If your rise is a positive number, you go up. If it's a negative number, you go down. If the bottom number is positive, that means you go to the right. If the bottom number is negative, which usually it never is, we don't, we don't do it that way. But if it was, you'd go left. Okay, so the two main directions we end up either going is up and to the right or down and to the right. So you guys have a spot where it says rise over run. I had to put it on the next line because I didn't have enough room to put that that way next to it. And the last step is once you have a couple points, you can have something like that. Maybe you'll even do more points. Depends how many you want to do. We're going to draw a line through those points, and we're going to shade. We're either going to end up shading above or below. Now, when I do it on the smart board, what I'll, what I'll do to make it easy to see, I usually use the highlighter. And if I had to shade above, I would just go something like this. And that would represent shading above. If I had to shade below, well, I just shade below. But when you guys are doing it on paper, if you have to shade above, you can just draw lines in like that. Okay? I mean, you don't have to like color the whole thing. You can just draw lines to show shading above. Well, on the test, it's going to be pretty simple. Once you draw your line, you're just going to click where you want to shade. If you click on top, it's going to shade the whole top for you. If you click down below, it's going to shade the bottom. So the shading will all be automatic for wherever you click. And if you make a mistake and you click in the wrong spot, you can always just hit reset and then do the shading again. Okay, so how do we know where to shade? Well, there's really four things that can happen. You end up with a solid line and you shade above, or you end up with a solid line and you shade under. Or you can end up with a dotted line and you shade above, or a dotted line and you shade under. So the two things we've got to figure out is what kind of line do we have? Solid or dotted? And then do you shade above or do you shade below? And that is going to depend all on the sign in the problem. So under regular cases, you guys have a table. You want to write down these four signs. Less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. If you 
have either a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to. Both of those are solved. If your original problem has a less than or a greater than, those are done. Okay, so how, how can you remember? Well, when you see the line under the symbol, with a solid line underneath it, that tells you you're supposed to draw a solid line. That tells you you're supposed to draw a solid line. If you don't see a line underneath it, then that means it's going to be a dotted line. Now, the shape. You're going to see the words here that either say above or below for all of these. Let's um, start with less than. If you had to connect a word with less than, when you think of less than, do you think of above? Or do you think of the word below when you think less than? Yeah, below. below. When I think of less than something, I think of it being smaller than something. It's below something. If your grade is less than somebody else's, then that means it's below. Less than is below. So both of these are below because they're both less than. So if less than means you're going to shade under the line, what do you think greater than means? You're going to shade yeah, over or above. Above. So this chart pretty much tells you, except for special cases, which I think we're going to do those tomorrow. Where to shape? So if I draw some lines, what is above and below? Well, if I drew a line like that, I would consider this above. That's below. That's how I think of it. If I had a line going, um, I don't know, let's draw it a little different. Like that. I would say this is above. That's below. The only time it gets a little weird, and this is a special case, is if your line is perfectly vertical. What's above and below there? I mean, if it's perfectly horizontal, I think that's easy. Above and below. But if it's vertical, well, we'll talk about which one is below and which one is above. It basically is like left and right. To the left is below, to the right is above. But that, that's the only one that's a little special. Hey, does everybody have, uh, have that table? Let's try uh, a few examples on the table. So they want us to graph that, which means doing two things. Drawing a line, and then doing some shape. So the problem is y is less than 1 half x plus 3. This is example two, and you guys have a spot on the upper right for example two. Okay. Under step one, what's the very first thing I said when you want to graph something like this? What letter is supposed to be by itself? Yeah? Y. Is Y by itself? Okay. So this one's perfect. This one, step one, is already done for you. Okay, step two, we're going to use the slope and the y-intercept to get some points. Okay. Um, how about, Tirza, what, what's my y-intercept there? Three. three. Can you tell me how to get to a y-intercept of three on that graph? Mm -hmm. Yep, on the y-axis, we're going to go up 3, we're going to put it down. Good. Okay, the next thing we need to use is the slope. Uh, 
Sean, what is this roll again, Sean? What is it? One over two? And can you tell me what directions? It's a positive one and a positive two. So it's telling me to go up one, right two. So you're going to go up one, right two, and put a dot. And if you had a ruler, you could just draw your line right now. Uh, if you don't, you can make some more points. Make enough points till you think you have enough to make a, a good line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just so you know. Okay, so there's my line. You can go back the other way, okay, if you want to. Sometimes I do that. Yeah, there are way more points than you need, but you know, you got a bunch of points. Now I have to decide two things. I'm either going to draw a solid or a dotted line. Which one is it going to be? Is this solid or is this one dotted? Yeah? Dotted. dotted. How do you know it's dotted? Um, because if it were a solid line, it would, um, under the, uh, the sign that has like, a solid line, like a beam, example, that would be like, Greater than or equal to? Yeah, or less than or equal to. So if you, if you just have a less than like we do, you're going to make the line dot. Okay, let's draw a dotted line. Now, once I draw my line, what's the last thing I have to decide? One more, one more thing I gotta do. Yep, we have to shade. Are we gonna shade above or below? Uh, what'd you say? Below, yes, because that's a less than symbol on the chart. Less than means to shade below. So you guys can just draw some lines going down. I'm just going to take the highlighter. I'll just highlight the section we're going to shade. And it's all this. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get you get the idea. Okay. So you shade, shade below. And when you shade below, that means that any point in this area in pink is a solution to the problem. That whole section. So looking at that pink area, can somebody name just one coordinate that falls in the pink area? Yeah. You sure? Zero, zero. That falls well within the pink area. So if you take zero, zero, and you were to plug it into that problem, it should work. If you plug in zero, zero, you get zero is less than one half times zero plus three. Well, that would be zero. That would give you zero is less than, well, half times zero is gone. You get zero is less than three. Is that true? Any point in this pink section would work. You cannot pick a point on the line. If the line was solid, you could pick a point on it. When it's dotted, you can't pick a point on the line. You have to be underneath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, that's example two. Any uh, question on that? All right. Why don't uh, you guys take a second and see if you can do example three. So it's y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. So use the table under the regular cases, and if you get stuck, just let us know, and we'll come over and help you. First thing I gotta do is draw my line. Uh, Joe, what's my y-intercept? One. Yep. So I'm gonna put a dot 
at one. And how about Abby? What's my slope this time? Yep, negative two. And so we can think of it as rise over run. Uh, what number am I going to put in the bottom? Yeah. A one. So Jacinda, from this point, can you tell me what these two numbers are telling me to do? Uh, down two and right one. So from your y intercept, you're going to go down two, right one. Okay. And I'm not going to do it a bunch of times. I'm just going to do it now. And that's going to be my line. Before I draw it, I want to make sure I, I pick the right tool. Is it going to be solid or dot? Solid. When you draw a solid line, that means points on the line are part of the solution. Not only where you shade, but the line itself is also part of the answer. Okay, so let's draw a solid line. Um, for me, it just helps if I zoom out so I can see it easier. This makes it a lot easier for me to get my line. <coughs> So there's my line. Can't even tell it's a line. If I zoom in, I think you'll be able to see it again. But there, there is an arrow on it, so it's a line. And is this going to be shade above or shade below? Which one? Yeah. Yeah, this is a below because it's less than. So what, what's below? Below is, and I'm going to do this without a highlighter like you guys can do it. Below is right here. That's below. So any point that falls in that shaded area would be an answer to this problem. And it keeps going. Just because my graph paper stops there doesn't mean the answer will stop. It keeps going down that way forever. Okay. <coughs> so what did I say uh, would be an example of a special case? If your line was yeah, vertical, or with one other special case, yeah, yeah, horizontal. So how can you tell if it's horizontal or vertical? Well, this problem had an x and a y, and it ended up on a diagonal. This problem had both an x and a y, and it ends up on a diagonal. That's, that's the key. So we're going to write this under special cases. This is going to be on the front side of the notes. You don't have to write this first sentence down. But the idea is it's going to be a special case if you only have one variable. So you're not going to have both an x and a y, just a y or just an x. If you only have a y, so you have a y with no x, like this. That's horizontal. Left to right. It goes across. So y is greater than 3. Special case, because there's no x. So what do you think if I had an inequality with just an x and no y? That's also a special case. But what kind of line do you think that would be? Yeah, that's going to be vertical. Yeah, exactly. Up and down. So the only difference um, with the shading for horizontal, less than, 
is below. Anything with a greater than is above. With vertical, you don't really have above and below. You have more left and right. So if you have a less than, with a vertical line, you're going to shade the way that it's pointing. If it's pointing, if it's a less than, you're going to shade to the left. If it's greater than, it's pointing to the right. So you're going to shade right. So I'm just going to add that on right there. So for horizontal, there really is no difference from what you just did. Less than is below, greater than is above. But with vertical, less than means left, and greater than means right. Let's um, try one of, one of each of those, and that'll be it. I know you guys didn't have a ton of room to add that column on for the special cases, but hopefully you can work that. Okay. And you don't have to memorize it. I would use this chart on the test when you take it on, on Friday. Then it's less you have to chart it. Okay, and I know the charts on the front and the examples on the back. I don't feel like when I have to do that, but I'm just gonna have to flip to see. All right, let's look at this one. Y is greater than or equal to two. What makes that a special case? Yeah, it has no X. If it has an x and a y in the same problem, then it's a normal case. Right? Your line's going to be on a, on a slant. If you're missing one of the variables, it's a special case. All we have is a y with no x. Can somebody tell me what kind of line is it when you only have a y? One of the special ones, yeah? Yeah, it's going to be a horizontal line, and the number tells me where to put it. It's a horizontal line going through two. But before I draw it, I want to make sure I do it right. Is it solid or dotted? Yeah? Solid. This one's going to be solid. So it's a horizontal line at the number they tell me. And now the symbol is greater than or equal to. Is that shade above or shade below? Yeah, above. that's above. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to go like this. So that's shaded above. So I think the special case, even though it's a special one, it's, it's easier because you don't have to do the slope and the intercept. You just draw a line at that number and then shade. Okay, so that was example, I don't think I wrote it on the board. That was example 4A. Now let's finish up with 4B. Oh, we did write 4A. Never mind. 4B. So, first question is that a regular case or a special case? Yeah. That's a special case. How come? Uh, because it only has one variable. It only has one variable. It only has an X. Um, what kind of line do we draw? when we only have an x. Yeah? Vertical. And it tells you to make a vertical line, that means up and down, 
at the number 3. 1, 2, 3. So we're going to make a vertical line right to that green point. Because that's 3 units, positive 3. Um, solid or dotted? What do we think this time? Michael? Um, yep, that's going to be dotted. Which means the boundary line is not part of the solution. And are we going to shade? There's no above and below, so it's more left or right. Yep. We're going to shade the way it's pointing. It's pointing to the left, so we're going to shade everything this way. And again, edge elastic, it's so much easier. All you're going to do is click in the area, and it's going to shade the whole thing automatically. Questions on that? Okay, so that's a good part of 5.6. That's probably more than half of it. That's probably 70%. So when we come back on Thursday, we'll finish 5.6. We'll do a little warm up to review. And then I'll put a list of topics that are going to be on the test. So, homework tonight is worksheet. Remember, term closes on Friday. This week's homework and this week's test are going on term three. <coughs> so the test and the homework are going to count for third quarter. Yeah.